Let's do it. I'm visiting my brother-in-law's shop today, and we're going to do a little padding beads on a little Hobart machine with some flux core. I tacked up a little bit of eighth inch thick steel, set it up at a good angle where you'd have a good line of sight, and then we had set in to padding beads to get him some seat time, some good practice time. This is piggybacking off of a previous video I did where I set up the machine and then talked about the most important things. Number one being polarity. You want to be on DCEN. You'll get a nice smooth arc like this if you have your settings right. But if the machine was previously used for hard wire, for bare wire with gas, it was probably on DCEP. And this is what you're going to get. Not good. Also, you want to use knurled drive rollers and set the tension a good bit lower than you would with solid wire so you won't crush the wire. Remember, flux core is hollow. You also need a good ground. I followed the instructions for the settings on my machine. These don't mean much to me. They don't list it in voltage and wire feed speed in inches. It seems to be around 18 to 19 volts, 200 to 230 inches a minute. Make sure your stick out is around 5 eighths of an inch. That changes a little bit if you're using larger diameter wire or your manufacturer's specifications might call out for something different, you should probably check them. Generally speaking, you should drag the puddle or pull the puddle with flux core. The old saying, if it's got slag, you drag, kind of holds true here. Main thing is though, the stick out. Holding that stick out about five eighths, maybe just a little bit closer at times, and just travel along at a nice, even, steady speed. You don't really need to do any manipulation, although it won't hurt to do just a little bit. Sometimes I'll do little tiny circles or something like that, but mostly just to play the light around to help me see better. Notice that my trigger is on the thumb side. I found that whenever I'd set the gun down like this, it would press the trigger and run out wire, and that would just got on my nerves, so I flipped it around. Not all guns will let you do that, but since this one did, it was just a matter of loosening up screws and rotating that neck around. Okay, it's Larry's turn here, and I'll be looking over his shoulder, kind of telling him to speed up or slow down or to tighten up, things like that. I find that's very helpful in, in learning. If you can get a one-on-one -on -one situation, somebody kind of giving you some guidance, it can really speed up the learning curve. Maybe a second best thing is to set up your own piece of metal just like this and watch a video like this and watch a bead and weld a bead and watch a bead and weld a bead. And of course, do it with intention. Pay real close attention to your stick out and your gun angle and your travel speed. Another thing is this is a really good time to play around with the settings a little bit, like adjust the voltage up and down just a little bit and see what effect it has. Same thing with the wire feed speed. Don't get crazy, but adjust it up and adjust it down. See if you get more spatter or less spatter. This is time to learn. You're not going to put a blue ribbon on this thing when you're done. You're going to throw it in the scrap bin, so it doesn't matter what it looks like. So play around a little bit with settings, play around with gun angles, stick out. Take a few notes, write down what worked and what didn't work. Hey, I'd appreciate it if you go check out my store at weldmonger.com. High quality welding gear like TIG kits, tungsten, gloves, new products being added regularly. Go check out the reviews. Appreciate your support.